This is my new white sewing machine. I got this at a flea market for $40 and it included the cabinet. And the wiring was good, which is unusual for an older machine. This one is controlled, I don't know if you can see it down there, it's by a knee lever. And <clears throat> for electric machines I really like that. I feel like I have better control than chasing a foot pedal around on the ground. Uh, so I'm going to try and do some uh, free motion quilting on it. So that's why I have my uh, my Teflon uh, quilting mat on there. Uh, got a free motion foot in it. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll give that a whirl in a minute. So the other news before I start sewing is that my uh, my new trifocals came in, and boy are they cool. I could actually thread this needle without having to bury my head right up into the machine. I can actually do it sitting up. And uh, they also work great on the computer. So I'm going to try sewing with, uh, with the trifocals on and see how it goes. So I'm going to zoom in and show you what I'm doing. Okay, so <laughs> this is a, a section that I did uh, yesterday trying it out. And uh, it seems to work pretty good. This is uh, lambskin. Um, it's a thin leather, but it's got some body to it. Uh, some of it is much thinner than others. This one's kind of a medium weight, and uh, I think it'll make a good bag. Uh, this section is what I'm working on now, and I did most of this on the other uh, one of my other machines. I did it on a Singer 66 treadle, but wanted to uh, try it out on the on the white electric and uh, as I said I you know I <coughs> almost always use my treadle machines or I've never used my treadle machine to do free motion or my uh, electric machine to do free motion quilting so until yesterday so it's a <coughs> a bit of a learning experience um, but I've had a lot of people say, well, I, you know, I see you doing all that quilting, but I don't have a treadle, so I can't do it. So I figured I'd better figure out how to do it on an electric machine also, because really I've been telling people that it's just exactly the same. So um, I wanted to be able to say that with some degree of confidence rather than uh, just making it up. So I'm learning to do it on an electric. Now this is pretty uh, low-tech electric compared to some that people have, but it's always been my contention that if a, I'm trying to get the, this is a weird, not an open toe foot, so it's easier if I get the, the threads underneath the foot and you have to go through the hole. Anyway, so it's, uh, it's always been my belief that any machine can do free motion quilting. It's just a matter of uh, <clears throat> figuring out how to do it. And, you know, everyone's a little bit different and they'll take a little different uh, adjusting, figuring out how much uh, pressure to put on the foot and getting the, a foot that's really works well with your machine. But um, once once you do it, it's really the same thing. And right now, I'm going really slow because I'm not used to it being electric. But Speed up in a minute once I get my once I get the groove going. The other thing I want to do is I want to check out my stitches. The uh, yeah, they're, they're fine. You want to always be sure when you're starting out on a project that your uh, your tension and all the settings are correct so that you get nice. Uh, good looking stitches that are not 
wonky, irregular, um, with the uh, you know with one top or bottom thread pulling too tight. So you, you may have some uh, thread uh, tension adjustments that need to be done every time. And of course, the leather is going to behave differently as far as the tension is concerned than a uh, normal quilting fabric, so you're going to have to keep that in mind if you're going to try leather. But heavier materials, the same thing. Um, every, every quilt project is going to be different. On this, because I can, I do have the feed dogs dropped, but it is not a uh, requirement by any means. They will uh, work just fine if you, if you have the right foot. You can do free motion quilting without dropping the feed dog without any trouble at all. because it's hard in leather. I'm just going to make sure I quilt over it a bit so that it, if there is any doubt about it coming out, if you sew over it a few times, it's not going to do that.
electric light, which I had my doubts about. But it feels pretty good, so I think I'll be okay doing this for a while. I certainly enjoy my throttle quilting and like to keep doing that all the time, but this is a nice break and I have had a number of people uh, as I said say well you know what you make is pretty but it's really it's really not uh, something I could ever do because I don't have a trouble so I'm, and I've had people ask me to teach classes too and I said you know my answer has always been well I can't provide uh, everybody in class with a with a treadle machine, uh, so it's really impractical for me to try and teach a class unless I know how to do it myself with an electric machine, so here you go. It looks like, you know, this is not going to be perfect, perfect, but it looks like I'm, I'm able to do a pretty respectable job with an electric practice, I'm sure I'll be able to uh, have a hard time telling one from the other as far as how the, the quality of the stitching turns out. But it feels pretty good. The one thing that uh, I need to do on this machine before long is even though the wiring was good, I need to make sure the, the motor is properly lubricated so that I'm not uh, burning up the motor because it's, you know, when you when you run one of these for a while, the motor, and especially when you run, run it for a while at a low speed, the motor tends to really heat up. So I want to make sure I have the proper amount of in the motor and that its brushes are good and all of that stuff. But if you have an old machine and don't feel comfortable taking the motor apart, I'm really not that comfortable doing it myself. But I know enough to be able to do basic service on one. Anyway, if you don't feel comfortable taking an old machine apart, fixing the motor, most of the sewing machine or repair places will be able to handle that task for you. As far as the oiling and the cleaning, that you should be able to handle without any trouble. It's really not hard. know how to take out the bobbin case, clean out all the linties from the inside. Um, I hit something, so I guess I'm done. Um, I gotta look underneath and see what, what that was all about. I think I bent my needle. So anyway, you should be able to take your machine apart and do some basic maintenance. Uh, mo most of the modern machines don't really want you to be oiling it yourself. Um, but you know what? When, they, when you take it in for service, they take it apart and oil it. So just for whatever that's worth. Anyway, I'm going to see what happened in here. I'm going to guess. that uh, because that was a really old needle that I was using and it was slightly bent. I knew that when I put it in, that it finally gave way and hit the uh, the edge of the 
flight there. Now, having said that, uh, don't, I do not recommend uh, sewing with a bent needle. It's, uh, it's really not a good idea, uh, especially on a more modern machine. Let's see, this one is not a leather needle. So I've got to get one. <clears throat> Modern machines are way more picky about um, the uh, the way they function, and a uh, slightly bent needle on a on a uh, on a more modern machine can really wreak havoc, um, and you'll wonder what's wrong. I usually, frankly, I, I seem to use them until they're <laughs> until they break, like that one just did. And uh, it's not a not probably the best thing, but needles are expensive. I found a couple of places where I can buy them online for uh, you know in, in larger quantities, but not always the size and type that I want. So. You get a five pack of leather needles for at my local fabric place for six bucks. And uh, you know, everything costs money, so you hate to waste them. So a lot of times I end up using them until they're uh, broken. And I gotta find my place. Anyway. Usually what happens is you just start getting into a nice rhythm and one of two things happens. Either you do something like I just did and break a needle or you run out of bobbin. And uh, it seems like I spend a lot of time trying to get back to where I was on a roll. But it's really not that hard to catch up again. Anyway, I think you can see what's what's happening here. I'm going to finish putting this up and it's going to turn into a purse. Uh, this part here will be a fold over uh, front flap. This will be the oh, go over the top and uh, this will be the back side and that other uh, piece that I quilted will be the front side which lives under this flap that all makes sense and then there'll be another band that goes around the outside to make the sides of the bag anyway that uh, that's it I just wanted to show you that I can see again that uh, uh, that I'm learning how to uh, quilt on an electric machine so happy quilting